Yes, everyone, welcome back to XG Files. Stephen Alson. On my own. You lot are going to have to step up and provide absolute wibble out of context and completely two-foot the conversation by taking it off topic, talking about your favourite zoo animals. Uh, Dre's busy and um, Ronaldo is in Dubai. So, uh, just me with you on a Friday afternoon. Um, and there's all sorts of busyness going on in the world of Manchester United. We've just been drawn severe. Wasn't aware that we was in uh, the Copa del Rey. I thought it was in the Europa League, but apparently we are now a Spanish club competing in a Spanish cup. Who knew? Um, I joked that we was getting severe last night in the WhatsApp group and um, we got severe, so yay me. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we get severe. My thoughts on that? Yeah, don't like playing them in the Europa League. I mean, they're like bottom half of the table in La Liga at the moment, not having a good season. I guarantee they turn up and give us one of our hardest games that we've had this season. Maybe even knock us out. They basically... I don't think UEFA get to put on the Europa League unless they've consulted with Sevilla about what's going on, do they? They own this. You know, if Real Madrid own the Champions League, as soon as that UEFA Europa League music kicks in, which nobody knows apart from Sevilla, they just turn into something else. They just go full robot mode and then um, get stuck into the mixer. Scotsman says, I quite like giraffes. What's everyone else's favourite zoo animal? Giraffes are weird, aren't they? How did they evolve? It's like a bit of a cow with a snake's neck and then it's got weird antlers on the top. How's that worked? You know what I'm saying, yeah. Chris says, Stevie, no mates. Yeah, I'm sitting here with all my friends. <laughs> um, is Jay not coming? Jay's on a broom in later on at four o'clock, so stay tuned for that one. Um, Bailey says, who would have I have preferred if it wasn't Sevilla? I wouldn't have minded that Belgian team, Union Saint Gilil, is it or something like that? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I wouldn't have minded them. Um, John says, is the moon made of cheese and will mice one day rise and conquer it? No, I believe it is made of rock. Or if you are from the Netherlands, um, you might believe it's made of petrified wood. And if you don't know what I'm talking about there, you need to broaden your horizons a little bit. Um, one of the reasons why people think that the moon landings might have been a bit of a problem and problematic and maybe not even quite real is because NASA gave uh, the Dutch government a gift of a moon rock, uh, which at some point later in the <laughs> in the whatever, the uh, the Dutch decided to get tested and found out it was made of wood. Not a moon rock. Uh, that's a true story, so you can Google that all by yourself and find out. And that just sort of makes you go, wait, they did what? <laughs> yeah, there's some fuckery afoot. Um, Inspector Woke, oh, that's a good name, says, uh, what do I make of Arsenal crashing out of the Europa League yesterday? I found it personally very entertaining um, how Arsenal fans immediately flipped and was like, hey, listen, now that um, doesn't matter. That's not a cup that matters. So I, was, I, I haven't replied to any of them like this, but I'm thinking, okay, so for the last 19 years, because now it's, uh, the league's the only thing that matters, is what they're saying. So for the last 19 years, your club has done nothing. Is that what you're saying? It's very interesting. Uh, Dan Ferenis says... Tellers can play. That's interesting, isn't it? How's Tellers allowed to play against us? Not sure I like that. Um, do I have my announcement? Yes, we do. And I'll I'll cue that up for you guys in a little bit. Um, Daniel says, octopuses are aliens. Octopuses are freakish. Uh, and they might very well be aliens. Um, hopefully you lot can't hear what's going on upstairs. It sounds like they're practicing for WWE Smackdown upstairs. Miles says, uh, this is good for our season, no midweek games, focus on the league. Yeah. Yeah. They can focus on finishing second now. Um, okay, so, ownership talk. Over the last couple of days, we've seen a Qatari contingent being given a tour of Old Trafford, and I'm sure Carrington as well. We only, well, at least I've only seen the, the tours of Old Trafford happening. Um, and today, in the last half an hour or so, Jim Radcliffe has been given the tour around Old Trafford as well. Um, meetings have been happening between the Glazers and the potential buyers the last couple of days. There's been new deadlines issued for the second wave of bids. Wednesday 
is the the new deadline according to uh, Mike Keegan from the Daily Mail with final offers due somewhere around Easter. Qataris have decided to make a second bid after a successful day of talks yesterday. Uh, there's some talk coming out that um, the gaffer, Al Thani, is, uh, is saying that the club will just spend its own money and um, that all of the developments and improvements will be done by the by the new owners. Um, yet to hear what's become of the chats from Radcliffe and the Glazers or what Radcliffe's plans are. My initial response to... What I was hearing about Jim Radcliffe was that he was going to have to fund it by by getting some debt involved. Was that I didn't want that. Um, I also don't necessarily. Well, I, I say don't necessarily. No, I don't want the club to be owned by um, by a state, by any state. You know, if Al Thani was just some random bloke that had made loads of money on oil and he was from Qatar, wouldn't give a shit. But I don't like the idea of football clubs or any sports being used as um, as a sports washing sort of entity but I didn't want the Glazers either and we had them for 18 years so uh, as bad as it is it almost doesn't matter what we think as fans and yes we can protest yes we can do this that and the other but you know will the appetite to protest be there against some of the the problems that there'll be with the Qatar regime because there will be some if they're pumping money into the stadium and the facilities and the football club very hard to get people interested in doing any sort of protest, I think. Liam said, red pandas are top tier zoo animals, adorable and no other animals remotely related to them. That's interesting. Uh, Cal says, so Jim isn't buying the whole club, only a percentage. That's not great, is it? Um, Mo says, who is, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know who the other bidder is. Um, and there's another supposedly another investment group trying to get in the mix as well, which doesn't have um, a great reputation. Brian says, surely if the Glazers are selling, it's going to be the Qatar bid. No way Sir Jim can compete financially. We don't know, do we? Because we don't know what level or sort of consortium he is with it. Um, Gabriel says, is this being filmed through a, lap, a, web, a laptop webcam? I'm seeing weird flickering. Is anyone else seeing this? We're not seeing it on our end. We can go like this by magic pow, to that camera. Josh wasn't behind it on the, on the old kapows there, was he? But we can go to this camera. Is this camera any better? Is that, has that sorted your little knickers out for you? Um, Bailey says, this is getting too serious. Uh, best drinks ranked. All right, okay. Rum. And then I like milk and Red Bull. Not together, because that's disgusting. Um, IR says, from Sociedad to Barcelona to Betis to Seville, what's with the Spanish teams in the Europa League? That's the one. Yeah, the Elliott Investment Group. I couldn't remember what they were called off the top of my head. Um, Daniel says, cameras are fine. And the other Daniel says, better. <laughs> Weekly Arms <laughs> Sports says, uh, do I think Donny van der Beek uh, will be surplus to requirements in the summer, especially if we invest under new ownership? Absolutely. How, how can anyone justify keeping him? And so I saw a stat today. Wout Vegas has now played more for Manchester United than the last two years than Anthony Martial has, and we only signed him in January. That was two months ago, for those who can't count. What? Who wins in a fight, a rhino or a hippo? I, I, think, I think you've got to go with a hippo, man. Obviously, you've got the, the face accoutrement of a rhino, which is going to make it a bit tough. And I think they've got a, a bit of a harder shell going on or skin going on. Can't a, a hippo, like, swallow a mini or get its jaws, like, the size of a mini? I think you've got to go with that, you know. Um, Chris says, and the tongue is the strongest muscle in the human body. Mm, interesting. Uh, if I could have any other first name, what would I pick? Max Power. Um, Tarig says, probably already explained, why am I alone? Ronaldo's on holiday in Dubai, seeing the love of his life, uh, and Dre's upstairs doing research. Um... Miles says, Hippo, hippos are the deadliest mammals, right? I think hippos uh, are responsible for more human deaths than like sharks or something like that. Um, Bob says, has anyone said if the six billion the Glazers want is for the shares entirely or they're 69%? I don't know. Uh, what's my favorite dino? See, my daughter's into dinosaurs in a big way at the moment and we have like a whole little dinosaur thing. Janine thinks she's fresh by... Naming some of the weirder ones like Gallimimus and things like that, right? 
I think she's just watched um, Jurassic Park once too many times. I'm going with Old Faithful. I'm going with the Raptors, and I'm going with the T-Rex. Uh, and I don't mind a Stegosaurus. But outside of that, I don't really know the differences between them. Um, Daniel Berry says, Sharks get a bad rep. Honestly, most shark attacks aren't even fatal. Um, do you know, sharks will only attack you in the water. If, if you're walking down like Southampton High Street, rarely do sharks attack you there. Um, Jesus says, who are Arsenal playing in the quarters? Nobody. They're, and it allows them to focus on... I mean, their run of fixtures coming up. Very interesting that Patrick Vieira went this morning. Wasn't surprised at that. Was you guys surprised at that? I was a little bit surprised at that. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, the sacking of Patrick Vieira, a bit of a shock. Does that mean Palace are more or less likely to, to disrupt what's going on with uh, with Arsenal this weekend? Um, Daniel says, Sporting were very impressive. The goal from the halfway line was sensational, but they, they did have a decent game against them. Arsenal had to bring all the big guns on. So you can't tell me they didn't care about it because they tried to get through. The way they were bringing people on, they absolutely tried to get through. Um, and the penalty taking theory is proven right once again. So you know that they're trying to go to the ABBA penalty system because it um, it changes the pressure on penalty takers. Sixty uh, percent of penalty shootouts are won by the team who uh, takes the first penalty. That's it. Sixty percent. That's enough of a swing to make you go. Eh, we need so. As the penalties were being lined up last night, I said to the, the, the WhatsApp chat, yeah, Sporting have won this. Before a penalty is taken, Sporting have won this. 60% chance Sporting have won this. Um, because the pressure on following all the time gets a bit too much. Um, whereas if you go the ABBA, um, it, it is closer to 50-50. John says, Steve, Shark's going to attack out of the water. I was fishing with my mate and got a mid-sized blue shark on board and it bit my mate. Okay, but he was wet at the time. So, rarely do you get them, you know, in Tesco. Akshay says, surprised about the area, but new manager bounce. Perfect timing after them being knocked out. Uh, we should get Pedro, the one who scored the screamer, as a Bruno backup. Um, sport, uh, Portuguese league has got a lot of uh, good talent coming through. It's a Basically, it's a freeway race, isn't it, every single year, but... Because of that, they, it allows a, le a level of technical proficiency to develop. Why doesn't that happen in Scotland? Okay, the weather's different, granted. But why has there not been some stuff um, sort of developed out of that in Scotland? Why have they not gone, actually, we're going to focus on this as our thing? Because if you're the likes of Aberdeen, Dundee, that sort of stuff, you, the chances of you winning that league are very, 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 very slim. So why not get... Uh, a reputation for developing something like I don't understand that sort of idea to be honest um, Ash says uh, they should take penalties simultaneously at both ends of the pitch ooh that's an interesting one isn't it David Radcliffe with a super chat there says Uncle Jim has got this Steve I don't think so you know if I was a betting man on which not which way do I want it to go necessarily but which way I think it's going to go I think the Qatar bid's going to win to be honest with you um, which takeover would I prefer I'm leaning towards the Qatar one at the moment because I don't want any more debt on the club but I don't think that that's the ideal bid either to be honest with you uh, I've got issues with, with all of them um, I've got a an idea for you guys. Um, I put this out on Twitter earlier and I've had some pretty good answers back. Um, one rule to improve football, go. So the one I suggested was if a player receives the ball, if a player was offside but receives the ball in an onside position, so sometimes like a, a big switch happens and the player was offside but he gets himself back onside uh, when he receives the ball and then the defence is reset in front of him. There's no more advantage anymore. So I think that should be a lot. Just play on. And it happens a couple times a game, maybe. Um, Akshay says, just joined, but you reckon that meeting with Jim lasted a few hours instead of 10 with the Qatar being very telling? No, I'm not sure, to be honest. Not sure. Would I prefer to fight a shark 
in water or a lion on land. Stu, I'm dead either way. There seems to be a lot of people survive shark attacks, right? For whatever reason. How many people do you hear of surviving lion attacks? Hmm. Anyway, we've got an announcement. So let's have a look at that. So, very excited to share with you guys that uh, we are partnered with... I'm still live, by the way, for anyone who's thinking, is this a pre-record? No, it's not. Um, this is a Whoop. Now, how many times people say to me, Steve, why are you wearing two watches? It's not a watch, it doesn't have a screen. It's literally just a Whoop band. It's a sensor in there that tracks my heart rate, uh, heart rate variability, it can read my sleep, it can do all sorts of different things. Um, and I am a big, big believer in Whoop. I've been wearing mine for, for almost three years, actually. Uh, I've been a long time member of Whoop. And as you can see here, here, I am for April doing a 30 for 30 challenge. So I'm gonna be challenging you guys to do 30 minutes of exercise every day for 30 days. Now the challenge that I did back in November uh, and October I, admittedly was a little bit mental. We did 457 kilometers of marching and, and that wasn't necessarily something that everyone could get involved with. Absolutely big ups to the handful of people that did do it with you, you're absolute legends. But wanted something that's a little bit more accessible for everyone. So 30 days of fitness uh, and just 30 minutes is the minimum requirement to get involved with this one. So you can go and walk for 30 minutes, you can go, um, go to the gym, do stationary bike, you can do any of that sort of stuff. And like I said, I've been a long time um, believer in Whoop uh, as a wearable health and fitness coach. And I love that it's personalized to every single person's experience as well. Uh, and it's designed to support your life, not invade it. It's got an AI powered coach, uh, which gives you personalized insights, gives you recommendations. You get to see how your sleep was at night, and then it gives you a recommendation on what your strain should be in the next day. Um, it tells you what you can and what you can't do. As I said, 800 plus days I've been a member, and you guys are always asking me, why, why am I wearing two watches? A lot of you guys know. Um, but it's not just, it's the device. It's a combination of the sensor, which is the Whoop 4.0 device, and it's got an accompanying mobile app as well. And the app has got a journal in it, so you can track what you've been doing, whether you had alcohol or whether you had any recreational drugs even. You can uh, check if you was taking your vitamins, whether you was getting your water, and then it gives give you insights, and it'll tell you stuff that sometimes you think is common sense. It'll be like, do you know when you hit your water goals, you actually sleep better? And it actually starts getting you back into a little bit of shape. So I've partnered with Whoop for 30 days. You guys can have a free month and it's a money back guarantee as well. So a free month by checking the link that's in the description. If you've already got a Whoop, then you can come and get in, in the mixer as well and join the community. We're gonna be putting challenges in that community. You can follow along with what I'm doing for the next 30 days in April, uh, but get signed up so you can get your Whoop in time for coming because it's gonna take a few days to get it delivered. Um, get your whoop in the mix uh, and you can track every single thing that you need to do. I love it for the sleep. It gives you sleep stages, your sleep cycles, all your disturbances. Uh, and a sleep coach can help you understand how much you need to sleep, what works when you sleep. Uh, and I'll be you know, sharing my journey both here on the IRL channel and on all my socials as well. So come and get in the mix on this challenge. We're doing it for April, 30 days in April. We're going to be looking at what we can do to get back in shape throughout April. Join it up. There's going to be a big community that's all sort of um, responsible to each other and accountable to each other. Get in a mixer and, uh, and, and you can see the Whoop. There is a subscription with it. You can get a month free with my link, uh, which is in the description. You can get it as cheap as £15 a month, um, depending on how long you commit to doing it. So have a check, uh, see what you think, and then come and get involved in the community. If you're already on Whoop, just come and click the link and join in the community and get ready for saying it. Um, Dan says, do I keep saying whoop? There it is, because I have since you mentioned it. No, I've not. Is it waterproof? Yes, it is waterproof. Um, you can swim with it, you can shower with it, but the only time I'd take it off usually is when I'm in the shower because you know, it can get a little bit funky under there if you keep it on. You, it's designed to be worn 24 seven and the battery is like a, a shell that sits over it. So you charge it up probably about every three or four days. I had an Apple watch. 
Apple Watch is off your wrist too much to make any sort of difference, but that's what I like about it. Um, Notch says, I've got uh, another band, but I want to... Uh, rather than a Woop, but I want to still take part. That's fine. I don't know if you can join the community because it is part of the, the Woop app, but I'll probably do something on Reddit so everyone can get involved on this one as well. Tommy says, um, do we think Qatar will run us like PSG? I think it would be fun for the re for a season or two, but I wouldn't want to become a club like that. No, completely agree on that one. Uh, I don't want to see us run like that. And that's one of the issues that I have when it is uh, an ownership like this and it's a bit of a plaything sort of idea. You don't know what, they're going to do to the sort of morals and history and, and heritage and identity of the club and I'd rather maintain the identity that we've got. How are my legs since the surgery? Um, they're pretty good. Uh, I still haven't been able to get fully, fully running at the moment, which is why we've kept this sort of challenge to just like a really, really achievable goal for everyone. 30 minutes of fitness for 30 days, build some good habits, get some momentum going. Um, doing the 457 kilometer march with weight I developed plantar fasciitis in my feet, which is well painful. Uh, and I'm waiting on a, an operation to fix those. I think it's just a steroid injection, to be honest. Uh, but I'm waiting on that, and then I'm going to be pushing again. Um, Ande says, favourite animal has to be animal from the Muppets. Good shout. Enraged says, uh, if a player was to receive a red card, instead of being sent off for the rest of the match, have a 20-minute timer so then the player can come back on. So, yeah, give me some of the rest of the rules that you guys were thinking. Um... And anyone had a really good one. I did see one on Twitter where someone said, um, start every game with a penalty shootout and then the loser has to win the 90 minutes to win the game. Um, carnage, but might be quite fun. Um, John says, new ownership should dictate uh, to academy to first team players. Oh, should dedicate to academy to first team players. They should. Uh, who wins out of a grizzly bear and a gorilla? Hmm, I don't know, actually. Aren't grizzly bears, like, way, 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 way bigger than gorillas? Um, Manoeuvre says, do I think it would be... What do I think it would take for a state-owned club to be sold by said state? We haven't seen it yet, have we? Although, I think we're getting quite close with PSG, and I don't know the reasons behind that. Have they just fell out of love with it? I don't know. Carl says, ref should be mic'd up. I don't have a problem with that one. I think that'd be a good one. Uh, Brian says, did Dan Hag meet the Qatari rep yesterday? He's met with Sir Jim yesterday. I'm not aware of that one, to be honest. Daniel Berry says, VAR reviews 30-second time limits. Yeah, um, I think if you have, like, uh, IFAB, who's the uh, people that put together the rules for football, they said people's interpretation of what's going on with VAR, certainly with the offside rule, is incorrect. They said if you've got to zoom in, then they're onside. Like, if you've got to start looking at, you know, is this pixel in front or behind there, then they're onside. You should just be able to glance at it almost in real time. You shouldn't actually pause it, in my opinion. If the ref wants to see a replay, play it in two or three times at full speed, and if he can't make his mind up, goal stands. You've got to give advantage to the attacking team, surely. Um, motion with a super chat says, the concern I have with Qatar is a state of PSG. People also say debt, but single person can buy a club with debt now. Even Elon bought Twitter with debt. Okay, that's one thing, but the debt has crippled this club for the last 18 years. I don't want to see any more debt in the football club. Like, the club have to pay that back. And I know leverage buyouts where you put the debt onto the club are no longer... Super, whatever, right? I don't want debt involved in a football club again. You can argue with me all day long about how it's not relevant to this, that and the other. And the same with Ineos buying Manchester United. Do you not think Ineos, as a business, is going to require that Manchester United service that debt, whether it's directly or indirectly? Are they not going to be accountable for that sort of money? Are the dividends not going to have to cover that and make them money as well? Then we're in the same position that we are now, don't we? Um, Stephen says, as a goalkeeper, I'd like a rule reversed. Goalkeepers should be allowed to handle the ball regardless of origin in their box. Uh, no, the... The goalkeeper's um, pass-back rule was a very, very positive rule in football that had a very positive impact on time-wasting, on, um, on ball-playing, um, and people playing football out of the back. So, no, I disagree with you on that one, mate. Uh, Jimmy says, what do you want, the new st a new stadium or a revamp of Old Trafford? Revamp Old Trafford all day long. Um, 
Linton in the, in the comments says, Qatar, baby. Uh, Chris says, show me a billionaire with clean money. Just get United some cash. We need facility upgrades. Now, um, Pathogenic says, only captains should be allowed to talk to refs. I wouldn't have an issue with that. Uh, Miles says, Arteta doesn't have substitutes at Arsenal. Apparently, they have impactors. What? Gurpreet says, only goalkeepers to take penalties. <laughs> Um, Joe says, would this be the first time any state has bought a club of this size and history? I think so. Yeah, I do think so. Um, obviously, City was Wigan Athletic with, with a lottery win. Um, PSG, PSG had done a, a little bit more than, than they get credit for, but they were still a relatively small thing. Chelsea was, was kind of on the up and up at the time that they were bought out, um, although it wasn't a state ownership, was it, with Roman Abramovich, but you know what I mean. Um, I think it might be, yeah. Um, Jerin says, do I think Sancho would reach his potential at United? Yes. <laughs> Colin says, new rule, pundits need to talk sense. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Uh, Andrew says, when a ball crosses halfway, you can't pass it back. Oh, back court rule. That would be an interesting one. That would be an interesting one. I've done that in um, in paddock training, actually. Um, I have uh, I've done that before in paddock training. That if we cross the halfway line, there's no back court. Um, yeah, that's not a bad one. I do like that actually. That's an interesting one. Stu says any paddock FC news today? Good result at the weekend, but another big game this week. I don't think it was a good result last weekend. Um, the opposition had scored 76 goals in 18 games prior to ours, so a clean sheet on one hand is a positive. So there's positive aspects of it, but it wasn't a good result. A good result would have been beating them. Um, but yeah, big game tomorrow. If we win tomorrow, I think promotion's back on. Uh, but if we lose tomorrow, I think I think it's probably done. Um, Joshua says, would Mbappe be able to do it at United considering the ego clashes? I, I wouldn't want Neymar or Mbappe at United. Um, I think the culture and the attitude that Ten Hag is creating doesn't really fit those. Um, yeah. Manchester 7 says, Ineos has shareholders. No way they take on a load of our debt without service, us servicing it. Yeah, of course. Like, can you imagine trying to sell that to Ineos? Right, lads, you lot are going to make less money now because Manchester United fans didn't want debt, but we got them debt. So we going to pay their debt for them? No, absolutely not. Um, John says, didn't Qatar try and turn PSG into a fashion brand? Don't want that. I don't know if they did try and turn into, or if that was just the marketing team that was, I guess, uh, eventually mm. underneath them. Um, yeah, I don't know. If I could erect a new statue at Old Trafford, who would it be for? Well, the previous criteria has been Ballon d'Or winners. All of our other Ballon d'Or winners outside of Ronaldo have had one. I don't think the general feeling for Ronaldo right now would elicit him getting a statue the way it ended. The Class of 92, as the brand become bigger than the individual players, and you know, with Ryan Giggs' ongoing court case, would you want to erect a statue for Ryan Giggs right now? Probably not. Does him, Skulls, Gary Neville deserve one for the careers that they had at the club? I would argue yes. Um, where does that leave Nicky Butt, Gary Neville, uh, Nicky Butt, David Beckham, and Phil Neville? Not sure on that one. Uh, what about Duncan Edwards, Brian Robson, Eric Cantona, Rooney? Phil Jones, this one behind the camera, who's going to be looking for his P45. Um, Gallic Breadman says, Ref should be mic'd up in the conversations with VAR, should be broadcast in real time. Both teams should get three reviews to challenge a ref like in cricket. I like the review thing. Yeah, uh, I like the review thing. Um, loads of comments. Harry Gregg. <laughs> Liam Liam started it really well there, said Harry Gregg or Ashley Young. It went west very quickly. Wayne Rooney says Dan Fenich. Um, Gordon Strachan says Ash. Robbo says Miles. Uh, Rooney's getting a few shouts. Cantona. Roy Keane, Jesus, yeah, I totally forgot Roy Keane. He's not going to get one while Sir Alex Ferguson's around. It's so sad what, what's happened between Sir Alex and Roy Keane. Um, in Roy Keane's first autobiography, he talks a lot about his emotion, about how he felt um, after Turin, and, and how he even acknowledges that, well, what a performance I've just put in. And I think Fergie has previously acknowledged, I think even in an interview at the time, about how Roy Keane's performance in Turin stands alone. Uh, and what he did for the club and the selflessness and this, that and the other. And then they fell out. Obviously, it resulted in Roy Keane getting sacked. And now they both pretend that Turin 99 was just a normal game. 
and Fergie even goes to the lengths of saying that Roy Keane wasn't even world class, which is so sad that those two can't fix it and get back together because greatest manager we've ever seen, greatest captain we've ever seen, Roy Keane was undoubtedly world class, and I think even Fergie acknowledged at the time that he was, you know, um, in in the company of one in terms of his ability on the football pitch. Raul says, "What's the situation with United and FFP? No idea." Uh, if we get Qatar owners, would we be able to spend what we need? I think so, to be honest. And a lot of the spending that United need to do realistically is not on the football pitch, so I think it'd be okay. Um, the life of Riley says a gig statue with a couple of his mistresses. <laughs> um, uh, he goes, "Now, nah, jokes aside, Kino needs one." Um, if I had to choose a country that buys United, who would be my favourite? Be hypothetical, um, Jamaica. Um, David says Jamaica has done so much. Jamaica has done so much for the culture of the world, for the size of the place. It's a joke, um, and match day food would get a lot better, and it'd be more rum. It's winning all round. David O'Connor says Roy Keane statue, greatest captain that's ever played the game. Uh, Jesus says mics up referees so we can know their thought process. Uh, JD and Coke says Bebe, a bit early for a JD and Coke. Friday, but I guess it is Friday. Uh, Jason says Mark Bosnich. <laughs> Who's going out in the summer, says Abanav. A lot of people, I think. A lot of people. Um, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with um, with the likes of Phil Jones. Dan says, Steve, are FC United fan traitors or proper non-plastic fans? Uh, FC, United fan, FC United was set up with such good intentions. Uh, as a protest to what happened with the Glacier regime. I don't think it was ever meant to be the success that hit. it has been. Um, I don't think it was ever meant to establish a new community club in Manchester. Then they're, they're not traitors, no. I think Sir Alex Ferguson was sort of cornered and, and given him a bit of lip. Um, but no, the, M M FC United was founded by United fans. F that was founded by United fans who decided to boycott because they felt so strongly about what happened um, with the Glazer ownership. Some of those people haven't been back to Old Trafford in 18 years. Now, whatever you think about that, that sacrifice is bananas. Um, I think FC's become very political in recent years, and I think there's been some issues with directors resigning and things like that in, in recent years as well, but they shouldn't have, uh, they should never have been the success that they've been. It's incredible. They, what they achieved was absolutely incredible um, from nothing, immediately. Um, but I don't know what you know, what happens to FC United once the Glazers go. Probably nothing, because they've established themselves as a very good non-league club in the area. They've got a phenomenal stadium and they've got a massive fan base. Um, what level are FC United that they are in the Northern Prem? Could we ever face them? Yeah, we could. If, it takes us a few years to get to that level, but yeah, we could. Liam says, Statue of Jimmy Murphy being installed later this year. That's phenomenal. Um... Marcus says, Roy Keane would probably be insulted by a statue or something. He probably wouldn't turn up. <laughs> be like the postman gets statues for delivering the mail. Well, some do. Uh, JD and Coke says, Phil Jones is a statue. Harsh, but fair. Um, Dan says, how's Vidic not been mentioned? Because United have got such a pantheon of legends. Where do you start and end it? Where's Solskjaer's for scoring the goal in 99? Where's Dwight York's for some of the... You know, where's Yap Stamps? You know, any player that's played over 500 games could argue to have one. Do you know what I mean? Um, who would win in a foot race, Maguire or the Horse? Ooh. Jesus, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, IR says, if we were City, we'd have a statue for Casemiro by now. Yes, but we're not small time. Uh, Notch says something for Eric Harrison, he was a genius. Yeah, Eric Harrison, absolutely. Charlie says, any chance that Ineos are willing to shoulder the debt because of the exposure that United brings to the company? Fuck no. <laughs> not a chance. Uh, Steve says, not sure if there's a rule against this, but managers should be allowed to criticise referee in post-match interviews. I kind of agree with that, but I think there has to be a level of a line, yeah. If they've made an obvious error, then yeah, they should be able to say that was just wrong, wasn't it? I think if you accuse them of being cheats, I think that might go over the the top a little bit but no sometimes there's been um sometimes there's been referee in which you might think is cheating but i don't think you can say that it's just very very poor officiating 
Um, Manchester 7 says, FFP better not look, look our way unless Chelsea get called up for something over half a billion in two windows. Yes. Um, ZXL says, Harrison statue would be perfect to celebrate the youth system of the class of 92 and everything glorious about the club. Yeah, that famous photograph of Eric Harrison and all the players behind him, that could be a statue, couldn't it? Um, Jay Hayes says, a statue of Michael Owen lifting the league just to piss off Liverpool. <laughs> uh, Ion says, if I was asked to play... If I was asked to, would I play Multiverse Wilson Frisk? Fisk? What is I, what are those words? I don't know what those words mean. Uh, statue of Louis in the press conference saying Louis van Gaal's army. Um, Jimmy says Ronaldo's in Dubai. I seen him on Market Street this morning. You definitely didn't. He's been in Dubai since Tuesday. Andrew says there needs to be a sighting commission like rugby, catch the incidents that have been missed, examine all the cards and decide appropriate bans. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, cheers for tuning in. Um, as always, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here and please get involved in uh, what's going on with Whoop. Like I said, you're going to get a free month. If you get a Whoop, get the app, uh, start tracking your sleep, start tracking your strain. It takes a good few days to kick in, so don't wait until the 1st of April because it has to like figure out where all your metrics are and that takes a few days so uh get involved and if you want to get involved i'll put a post up on reddit so keep an eye on socials so even if you're not uh part of what the community is on whoop you can still get involved with this and just follow the journey along every day i'll be posting what my session is um i'm working with luke as a, a personal trainer and we've got everything coming um for what i'm going to do and some of it looks a bit tasty so if you want to do what i'm doing uh, there's a home workout, three gym workouts, and uh, three runs or hikes. Um, or if you just want to go for a 30 minute walk, check it out. But uh, cheers for tuning in as always. Links for all that 30 30 challenges in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms.